If you think of England, what's the typical dish that first comes to your mind? Well, I think of fish and chips, and preparing this national dish requires quite a bit of cooking oil. In London, snack bars and restaurants use millions of liters of cooking oil every year, and most of that used oil ends up in the sewer system, where it clogs things up and causes serious blockages. Sounds disgusting, right, Auntie? Oh, most definitely, Sharon. But believe it or not, these so-called fatbergs can be used as a resource. Now, a British company is turning them into green biodiesel. Let's have a look at how they're doing it. If you're going to venture down into London's sewers, you don't want to be too squeamish. Sewage from millions of homes flows through these tunnels. Restaurants and snack bars also flush millions of litres of cooking oil down the city's drains every year. This discarded fat has led to a festering problem. In the sewage system, liquid grease congeals into a tough, slimy mass. These so-called fatbergs can cause serious blockages. British company Argent Energy is transforming this waste fat into biodiesel. Dickon Posnet is the company's director of corporate affairs. It's the only one in the world that can handle such degraded, horrible, smelly raw materials, including fatbergs, the fat dug out of sewers and out of water treatment works, the fat and scum that comes out of that. We can deal with that, we can turn it into an oil and put it through the biodiesel process. Biodiesel can be produced from a range of oil-based materials with most of the world's supply made from soybean oil. Producing biodiesel from waste fat isn't new, but Argent says their facility can transform even the most rotten of raw materials, like animal fat, food waste and sewer grease, into biodiesel. Argent's sourcing manager, Heather Swimbank, is responsible for gathering the putrid raw material. My role within Argent Energy is actually to go out there, speak to the water companies, speak to food manufacturers and, and different people who are putting this stuff down the sewer um, and bring it here to Argent Energy to make biodiesel out of it. So I guess you'd call me a fat hunter. <laughs> and this is how it works. First, the sewer grease is sieved and filtered to remove any solid materials. In a second stage, another system removes the water. Then the oil is processed through a chemical reaction and turned into raw biodiesel. After cleaning, the biodiesel is blended with conventional diesel and supplied to bus companies around the country as a sustainable fuel. This facility near Liverpool cost 85 million euros, but Argent says it was worth it. The carbon savings that we get out of this plant alone is just under a quarter of a million tonnes of carbon every year, which is the same as 120,000 cars off the road each year. The company believes there's enough fat in Britain's sewers to keep them in ready supply. The hope is that in the long run, the biodiesel produced from London's fats, oils and grease could be used to power buses in the capital. And chances are good that the plan might work. A few years ago, the biggest ever fatberg was found in the sewers. It weighs about 130 tonnes. The company estimates that could provide enough raw material for up to 10,000 litres of biodiesel. Now let's head to the Chobi National Park in northern Botswana to visit a special wildlife project. Tories come to the area to see animals, but if left unprotected, the wildlife will die out and so will tourism. Luckily, there's a lodge in the park that is more than just a place for visitors to stay. It's a pioneer in immobility and its staff members have a special place in their hearts for giraffes. Let's go take a look. The Chobi River in northern Botswana forms the country's natural border with Namibia. While fishing and agriculture dominate on the Namibian side, Botswana has put its side of the river under protection. That was 50 years ago and made Chobi Botswana's first national park. Early morning is perfect for watching wildlife. The mud light on the sky, beautiful. 70,000 jobs in Botswana depend on the tourists who visit the country's wildlife reserves. But for Gobi Mochidizi, 
working as a park ranger is much more than just a way to earn money. The national park together with the animals means everything. It means everything to Botswana. That's tourism. So conservation is the most important thing. We have to love our animals. We have to protect the environment. And I'm happy to be one of those people that do that in our country. The high-pitched whine of an electric motor. This game viewer is one of the first electric safari vehicles on the African continent. And besides e-cars, Chobi Game Lodge also boasts a fleet of silent solar-powered boats. And besides that, it's also managed to cut down on 95% of its waste and garbage. Running ecotourism and focusing on it um, is going to be paramount. Your traveller these days are becoming also more responsible and they would like to, to make sure that, that if they do go on holiday, that they do support um, sustainable um, holiday destinations and operators. With two million visitors every year, Botswana's tourist industry ranked second after diamond mining. Conservationists around the world commend its complete ban on hunting and fierce stance against poaching. Across Africa, hunting and the growing human population are forcing wildlife out of their natural habitats. Many of the most fabled species have been driven to the brink of extinction. Conservationist Robert Sutcliffe, who collaborates with the Chobe Game Lodge, is worried. Even in Botswana, road construction poses a serious threat to wildlife. One of the main reasons is habitat loss. Um, a lot of development throughout Africa, a lot of areas being logged for, for wood, um, um, areas being clear, cleared for farming, and then development like we're seeing in Kasani, sort of pushing these animals out of the areas that they normally inhabit. In 2012, Chobi River and its national park became the centre of the Kavango Zambezi Transfrontier Conservation Area. This is the home of one quarter of the global population of endangered African wild dogs. It's Africa's largest reserve and spans five countries. The aim? To enable animals to migrate naturally and freely. The effort has paid off. While giraffe numbers are dwindling in other parts of Africa, here they're still numerous that it's so important that we work to try to conserve the, this population, that this you know, could be a, a stronghold for, for giraffe. And it's also amazing to see them moving into Zimbabwe, moving back into Botswana, and um, there's just no barrier to, the, to their movements there, which is, is wonderful to see. At roughly 5% of GDP, ecotourism is still in its early stages in Botswana. But the sector is growing fast, providing a steadily increasing contribution to the well-being of the country and its people. What inspiring work. Let's hope there are a lot more projects like this soon. Well, that's it for this edition of Echo at Africa, the Environment magazine. My name is Sharon Momani. Thank you so much for watching and see you again next week. Bye-bye from Kenya. To find out more about our Pan-African and European environmental program, check out our website or our social media channels that we're showing on your screen. I'm Neil Taegbe. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye from Nigeria and see you soon.